My search for a huge prehistoric looking elephant named Beam Gage continues. I'm betting the biggest Asian elephant in the world is in this forest leading the herd. Okay, so we've come into the forest. The elephants come into the forest, we've come after them. just told me about a tusker, a male elephant close by, that killed some six people in the last two months. Food for thought as I head in. This is amazing. I have two tuskers. One tusker. There's nothing stopping wild elephants foraging for food. They'll knock down whole trees by stepping on them, or rip them down with their trunks. It's just kind of playing around in there. But they're heading this way. The most impressive thing is the sounds. You're looking through dense jungle trying to make out some kind of shape, and then you just hear this kind of low rumble, and it shakes the forest. They're talking to each other in this subsonic sound waves, and it's amazing. Your, your whole body kind of trembles. Like, what is that feeling? What's that? What's that feeling? It's, it's the elephants talking to each other. Maybe it's just me. Need to get out of here. Need to get out of here now. Straightening the baby's eye line. Rajan wants me back now. The elephants are less than 20 meters away, and if they feel their babies are threatened, they could charge. Beam and Rajan have scarpered. They are too, too close. I don't blame them for going away. They're big. I'm definitely keeping an eye on those big ones moving closer. Mothers with babies are especially temperamental. Todd, our cameraman, is pulled out by the guides, leaving me to fend for myself. Talks to its mother just to let it know that it's okay. And about 
ten minutes ago, I heard a trumpet, which must have been one of the male elephants noticing a tiger or a leopard, or maybe even noticing our smell and just saying, I'm here, get out of my way. It's, it's just, it's no more inspiring feeling. yesterday tracking the elephants over here and at no point was I more than 100 meters away from them and today with this mist I'm gonna to have to raise my game yet again I'm going to prepare for another long day my nose to the ground trying to find the largest elephants in Asia which just disappear finding an enigma is not easy with no sign of beam guard the Bardia giant I head down river to search a new area. I check in with my guide, who suggests I go even closer to the lowland villages, where big elephants are sometimes seen. I run into dozens of villagers who are allowed to come into the park once a year to cut grass and collect firewood. Each year, several of them are killed as a result of unwittingly antagonizing elephants and rhinos. And I've just come across a sure sign that rhino are nearby. Rhino dung, rhino dung, rhino dung, rhino dung, rhino dung, rhino dung, rhino dung. I, I can't imagine the animal that, that has deposited its pile here. This is amazing. Now, what we see is, what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven different piles of dung. I spent much of the last 11 years running around the world looking for dung and collecting it for different studies of different things. Um, I've not come across much like this. This is quite something. Fantastic. You get so involved in searching for elephants, it's easy to forget there are plenty of other large, dangerous animals nearby. And as we know from the grass cutters, it's not good to surprise a tiger or rhino in the tall grass. I've got a good vantage here, about 16 feet up off the ground. It's a female Asian one-horned rhino with a baby. There are only about 2,000 of these left in the wild, and I'm not passing up the opportunity to get close to her. But I've got to stay downwind so she won't pick up my scent. With the size of the trail, she makes this enormous. don't want to mess with an Asian one-horned rhino. They move at 50 kilometers, 30 miles per hour, will crush you under two or three tons of weight, then use their huge teeth to inflict terrible bite wounds. We are apparently very, very cautious now. She just turned to face us. The worry is, because they've got such bad senses, that if she gets scared, she's gonna charge. She weighs two and a half tons. It's the last thing you want to be coming at you at 40 miles an hour. We have to be very, very quiet as well, because the hearing is quite good. I'm keeping a close eye on her, but I'm right out in the open, and if she charges, I've got nowhere to go. The villagers have spotted the rhino coming out, and they're not sticking around. They're out of here. It's just been like, get back, get back, get back. She's 10 yards away and just knocked at us. Come back down, shoot again, look straight back again. Now there's some monkeys up there as well. They're looking agitated too. And the guides are terrified. We've got to step back. They're really unhappy about this situation. She's so close. We've backed off. She's just coming out. Look at her. What a tank. She's still cautious, guarding her baby. Oh, this is fantastic. The rhino was amazing, but I'm after a missing link. Bean Gage, the biggest elephant of its kind. But first, a herd of wild elephants teaches.